deserves great consideration. We've been doing our own research as well, and we looked at battleground states in Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and Georgia to see what the trends suggest. In Michigan, President Trump absolutely was crushed in Detroit's Wayne County. He lost by 38 percent. But his average win in every other Michigan county was 26 percent. That's a 64-point swing. In Pennsylvania, President Trump supposedly lost Philadelphia County by almost 64 percent. In the counties he won, President Trump did so by a margin of 39 percent. What's going on here? And in Georgia, Joe Biden won the Atlanta County of Fulton by 46 percent, whereas the president won all of his counties by an average of 41 percent. And finally, in Wisconsin, where a state recount has just wrapped up, President Trump is reported to have lost Milwaukee County by a staggering 40 percent. Think about this. President Trump won all of his counties by an average of 22 percent. Quite a swing and quite a statistical, well, unlikely uh, result. Joining us now is Sidney Powell. She's former federal prosecutor, uh, General Michael Flynn's defense attorney, a great American, and and I know for a fact uh, as busy as she can possibly be working all hours of the day. Sydney, thanks for taking the time to be with us. Let me start by just saying uh, this time is yours. Uh, right now, uh, this audience, most of America, wants to know where are we in this fight for the White House? Well, we are making great progress, Lou. We have one case in the in the court in Georgia that's getting ready to go to the 11th Circuit. We're going to ask for emergency review of that, where we sought to impound all the voting machines in Georgia. And we need, frankly, to stop the, the election that's supposed to happen in January, because all the machines are infected with the software code that allows Dominion to shave votes for one candidate and give them to another and other features that do the same thing. And we filed a suit also in Michigan, and we're preparing suits for several other states. And as I'm sure your viewers hopefully know and caught part of the hearing in Arizona today that Rudy Giuliani conducted for the legislature to right. see much of the evidence that has been accumulated by some experts that will be uh, helping our case also. It, it's just pouring out more by the day. People are coming forward with different bits and pieces of the puzzle. Different states shaved different amounts of votes, uh, or the system was set up to shave and flip different votes in different states. Some people were targeted as individual candidates. It's really the most massive and historical egregious fraud the world has ever seen. The top officials of the Georgia state government, the Secretary of State, the governor, Brian Kemp, was in a very similar situation as we reported here at the top of the broadcast three years ago when he was Secretary of State. And he was sued as Secretary of State, the state of Georgia. And incredibly, as soon as that lawsuit was filed, that server uh, under, uh, under uh, Secretary of State Kemp was wiped. Uh, and that has obviously was at the core of your concerns in seeking an injunction uh, from Judge Batten, the federal district court judge uh, who issued the restraining order. Correct? Correct. And guess what happened yesterday while we were in the process of trying to get the state to respond for our request to the restraining order? Someone went down to the Fulton Center where the votes and Dominion machines were, claimed there was a software glitch and they had to replace the software. And it seems that they removed the server. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Do we know where the server is? Uh, no, we don't right now. I, you know, people don't go to jail for their attitude. But in the case of the Secretary of State and the governor of Georgia right now, one would be tempted to prosecute based on their conduct so far. What is going on with those two individuals? 
I think there's a lot going on, Lou. I think there's a lot of corruption there underneath the surface. We've gotten tips from different people that we haven't been able to verify completely yet, but it seems that there were significant uh, benefits for both Governor Kemp and perhaps Mr. Raffensperger also, and maybe others on their team for deciding at the last minute to rush in a contract for Dominion for $107 million for the state. Ironically, the state lawyers claimed yesterday that the state had no control over the county's handling of the voting machines, never mind the state itself purchased the machines and forced them to use them. And the Secretary of State is responsible for all fraud investigations of voting and everything else with respect to voting. It was one of the most disingenuous arguments I've heard any government council make, but uh, that's, that's what they Judge. all seem to do these days. Uh, initially, the judge granted the, uh, the temporary restraining order, then reversed himself after the state had made that claim, then reversed it uh, himself again uh, and ordered the impoundment, effectively the impoundment of those machines. But obviously within that window, apparently in Fulton County, the state of Georgia took that server. Now, do we know, uh, you know, I, I just can't, I, I think most Americans right now cannot believe what we're witnessing in this election. We have across almost every state, uh, whether it's Dominion, uh, EBS, whatever the company, voting machine company is, no one knows their ownership, has no idea what's going on in those servers, has no understanding of the software because it's proprietary. Uh, it is the most ludicrous, irresponsible, and rancid uh, system uh, imaginable in the world's only superpower. We look like a complete nation of fools, and we're supposed to be meeting constitutional deadlines on December 8th, <laughs> December 14th. Are you kidding me? This thing should be shut down right now, and people understand that this will not be tolerated by the American people. You are absolutely right, Lou. I couldn't have put it better myself. I can't even begin to tell you how appalling everything I'm seeing is. Somebody sent me the tape from a machine in California, and it reported 550 votes with 270 voters. That's the kind of thing we're seeing when we can get the actual documents. Meanwhile, Dominion and its minions and other state officials everywhere are apparently out there trying to destroy everything they can get to before we can seize it. And our Department of Justice and FBI are nowhere to be found. I am absolutely livid. And I know the American people are livid, too. That's why we started the Defending well, the Republic honestly, org to fight this. Let me be straightforward with you. I had a damn sight rather have Sidney Powell and Rudy Giuliani on the case uh, than Christopher Wray uh, and the fools, the corrupt fools that lead the FBI any day. Uh, I wish it were otherwise, but the American people understand what we now are up against in this country. Uh, and as I said at the uh, outside of the broadcast, Sidney, this is no longer about just voter fraud or electoral fraud. This is something much bigger. And this president has to take, I believe, drastic action, dramatic action to make certain that the integrity of this election uh, is understood or lack of it. The crimes that have been committed against him and the American people. And if the Justice Department doesn't want to do it, if the FBI cannot do it, uh, then we have to find other resources within the federal government. We've got to rise above this because the nation itself this is an assault on the core of a democracy, any democracy, our, our ability to cast a secret ballot. Uh, your thoughts, Sydney, uh, as we wrap up here. Uh, that's exactly right, Lou. It's, it affects the bedrock of our de democratic republic. It can't be allowed to stand. And frankly, I'm about to think the entire FBI and the entire Department of Justice need to be hosed out with Clorox and fire hoses. Well, Sydney, I think right now that you would get many seconds for that proposition. <laughs> Sydney Powell, thanks for being with us. We appreciate it. And thanks for everything you're doing for this country. Up next, Judicial Watch.